Hi. Um, so um, when I say open access, I really mean open data. Um, <laughs> just to put that out there. Um, okay, so I, three months ago, moved to a new job um, at Bishop Grosseteste University. Hands up if you've heard of Bishop Grosseteste University. Oh, we're smattering people, hooray. <laughs> we're really, really small. Um, to give those of you who haven't heard of us an idea, we have less than 3,000 students, we have less than 100 members of academic staff, which in some ways is great, because it means you can talk to researchers, like you can pretty much go and talk to all the researchers, which is lovely. Um, but uh, um, it also means that we don't have very many policies in place, um, and people can kind of do what they like a little bit. Um, the other issue is we've only been a university for six years. Um, before that, we were a teacher training college for 100 years. So there's still a huge uh, teach training college ethos at the university, really. If you talk to most people who at another university would be thought of as researchers, they don't really think of themselves as researchers. They think of themselves as um, teachers or lecturers who happen to be doing a bit of research on the side. Um, so um, when I worked at other places, um, big research intensive universities, this was true. <laughs> um, so um, I think it's hard enough getting people who think of themselves as researchers and who think of their research as being their kind of primary thing to get them to engage in research data management, um, to invest the time in that, to think about why they might want to make their research open. That's hard enough. When those same people actually research is so far down their list of priorities. I mean, don't get me wrong, the university's all like, oh yes, we're gonna do better in the ref this year, but if you talk to individual researchers, they're like, I don't, I don't have time for this. So it makes it even, even harder. So um, research services at our university is me, um, and I am, uh, I'm trying to do something about this. As I say, I've only been there three months, so a lot of this is problems rather than solutions. Um, these are the things that people say to me when I start trying to talk to them about research data management. I think these are the sort of things that people say to a lot of people, particularly in humanities, social sciences to some extent, arts, um, which is what we primarily do. Um, so those first two, uh, my research doesn't have data. We've definitely had that mentioned already today. Um, and uh, the other one is no one is interested in my data. I think when research isn't your really big thing, it can feel a little bit like, oh, I'm just pottering around with some things I'm interested in. Everyone else isn't interested in this. And so that can make it quite hard to um, really push the idea of sharing your data because they're saying, well, no, no one else wants it. It's not worth my time to do it. Um, one of my solutions to that is um, I'm sort of trying to build a bit of a, um, a selection, certainly from my point of view, of really, really good examples of sharing sources or data, or a lot of these are sort of translations or things that have extra commentaries on sources um, to get, give people in humanities and arts um, a better idea actually what they could be doing. Sure, lots of these took a huge amount of time. They're probably not going to do that. But when people say, oh, I don't have data, or, oh, no one's interested in my data, if you show them these, they go, oh, oh, actually, that's really cool. That's a really cool project. So um, that's something that I do um, want to try and kind of talk to people about. So if anyone has really cool humanities or art projects, um, do tell me. I'd like to share those too. Um, and the other one, which is a really big deal at my university. Those first two, I think, happen anywhere where you've got arts and humanities. Um, these ones um, are quite specific to the fact that everyone really, really prioritizes teaching where we are. So, um, you know, I've got too much teaching to worry about my research. I can't put that extra time into my research. Oh, if data management's gonna take some time, I can't do that. Uh, um, and the other thing that we get a lot is, I need to prioritize the students. And this comes top down as well. So although you know, the management is really keen on us doing better at the ref, it's very hard to get money for anything that doesn't prioritize the students. So, um, so uh, that's a really big problem. And so one of the things that I'm gonna try and do over the next kind of six months is try and come up with some ways to make um, 
research data management and sharing of data particularly, really integral to, um, to teaching practices and to see whether actually by using people's data we can encourage um, research data management by doing it in teaching. Um, so uh, these are kind of some of the initial thoughts that I have, some of the things that we're going to try talking to researchers about. As I said, we've got less than 100 people. I can actually just go and talk to everyone and see what people think about these things. Um, so um, one of the things that I can do very easily, because I'm in charge of reading lists, um, is to try and incorporate open access resources into reading lists. And it just encourages people to think, oh, yes, actually, there are resources out there. And to, to really get it into their heads about these resources. Often, I think, particularly in our sort of little university, people can be quite insular. They just don't know what's out there. Um, and they don't know what other people are doing. Um, so the other thing is um, trying to get people to use their research with their undergrads. Um, so, you know, people are doing these little research projects on the side. Um, well, it would be really great if we can try and get some of those little research projects to turn into undergraduate research projects or master's research projects. Uh, and by doing that, you inherently have to do research data management. In order to share that data with your students, you need to have it in a form uh, that's shareable. Um, even if it's not sharing outside of the university, it encourages uh, sharing of data within the university. Um, and um, yeah, so the other thing about that is that it does allow, uh, so the, the, um, the, the final one, about kind of using your undergrads to collect data, which I'm always a little bit wary about because I used to be in biology and generally get bad data if you get your data from your, from your students. Um, but if you can get good students, uh, um, then um, you, can, you can code that time as teaching time. Um, yes, so if anyone's had any uh, good um, ways of integrating research into teaching, please let me know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Beth. It's really nice to hear a, a different perspective <laughs> of things, and I'm really jealous of the <laughs> how many people you have to speak yeah, to and your ratios. <laughs> yeah, but we have one question up here. Let's see if I can. <laughs> yeah, more comment than question, but I've been um, doing a bit of reading and research myself, and I found one incentive or one thing that was mentioned was uh, good research data management and sharing. Uh, often um, professors will give students a data set to work with mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and this is your semester project use this data set but uh, they don't know that there are other data sets out there uh -huh. as well so that not only their data sets can be reused but they can go out and, and find so it makes actually uh, less work yeah. for the lecturers if they know where these data sources are yeah, they don't absolutely. have to give them back to the students. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, so in social sciences, there are some um, you know, great data sets out there. And I think you, know, you can do great work with undergrads and saying, OK, well, go and find a data set. And right. then they'll have to look through them all and find them all. It's, you know, I, there's some exciting things you can do, I think. Mm. Um, so again, it's more of a comment than a question, but there was just a couple of things. The OpenCon conference happened um, last weekend, mm -hmm. and there were two things that came out of it that I think might help. One, we've started an Open Humanities and Social Sciences group. Yes, I joined the Twitter this morning. Brilliant. So <laughs> hope it, well, yeah, I'll just say it. For those who haven't seen it, um, we're looking to have community calls um, in the way that OpenCon have general and librarian calls. We're looking to have one specifically for humanities and social sciences. There was also a particular group who looked at... Um, using data as a teaching resource, which I didn't go to, but the uh -huh. notes will be online somewhere, so you might yeah, want to look that, that up as a great. people to link up with. Yeah, yeah, really good. Thank you very much. Uh, open hum sock sigh. <laughs> Catchy. Catchy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you very thank much. You.